Hi there and welcome to Good Enough Scenery and the second part of the modular Osgilia Ford. This is all about the basic construction. So you can see the board in its current state. This is not finished yet. There's still things to do, but very much playable on. Now in this video, we're going to be showing you how I'm cutting out the baseboards, how to cut out the upper, upper levels, and also going to be showing you cutting out the uh, building template, the footprints of them, which form the uh, extra layer of modularity that this board has. So. As you can see, the board here in front of you, I'll just let you just take in its wondrousness uh, and you can imagine what it's going to be like when there's even more buildings made for it. Now, as a reminder, if you want to support the channel, then if you follow the uh, product links in the description, that will go to Amazon. And if you buy anything off of Amazon, having followed that link, then it will give me a small amount of kickback, which allows me to continue to grow this channel and continue to do bigger and bigger projects. But that being said, let's get into how to make this board. So this starts with some 20 mil thick XPS foam. I'll put a link in the description as to where I get mine from. And what's gonna to need to happen is that this is gonna to need to be cut into four strips. Now to cut this, uh, pretty simple going. So we're gonna just measure accurately from the edge, for still seal rule to 30. Gonna do the same down here. A nice sharp blade, something long and straight. Now to begin with, you want to just very gently just mark out your line and then you can build up the depth. And once it's marked pretty well, you can move on to using just a st the steel rule again. One down and uh, seven to go. That is our eight baseboards done. So next up we need some 10 mil XPS foam. We're gonna cut four, we cut one of these into four. So exactly the same thing we're gonna do here. There we go, one done. And that's the first stage of the project where I'm actually having to make a uh, proper grown up decision on it. So this is the 30 mil thick foam, which is going to form one of the higher um, sections of the board or two of the two of the boards are going to have this higher section on it. So it's about deciding how big this should be. So it's going to be octagonal in shape, the whole section being 60 across, um, I think, four centimeters off each one. So four off the width and eight off the length. So that's 26 again, I put a mark there. I need this one to mark out the size of the next one. So these have been, the width has been cut. I just need to cut the length. Now I could again do this with a knife, but uh, you know, I've got a hot wire cutter, so why not use it because it's perfect for this. Bingo. So we've got our 50 mil foam. Now this is gonna be tricky, but not impossible. So 26 is there. Here. Now you can, and I have, uh, cut through this, this board before with a sharp knife. You end up having to get the blade right the way out and it ends up not having the straightest cut. So I'm gonna do it a different way. Now this is destined to go completely wrong. I'll be honest, that could have gone a hell of a lot worse. Eight centimeters off. And that is the highest section of the board done. So in terms of the basic stuff, um, pretty much done. So next up, we're gonna decide the footprint of the building, um, potential building layouts and scatter terrain layouts. So uh, I can decide that there's gonna be a large footprint and a small footprint. So the small one is gonna be 10 centimeters square, which is about that big. And the other one is gonna be uh, 20 by 10. And the reason for that 
is that I thought it would be quite nice if we could have 10 by 10 bits of terrain fit into the 20 by 10 bit just so there's even more variety. So I've been playing around with this so I think that um, having something so for this one they're all at kind of 45 degrees something like that and then another one over there like that so um, you've got the, the stuff all at an angle. Now it's really going to be important that these things are cut accurately so because we want to be able to move them between things nice and easily. So I've got a set square here and this creates a perfect 45 degree angle in a position where there's space at the sides in case it's up against the edge of the board. So a bit further than that. I reckon round about there. So I'm gonna make a mark on that angle there like that. And that's gonna be 20 by 10, so that will take it all the way up to here. So down there like that. going to switch hands to the other side and go up to there like that. Get our set square again, line it up there like that. Extend that to the 10 and then same on this corner here. Extend that to 20. And then the hope is that when I measure this distance here, it's going to be exactly 10, which you know what it actually is. To the mill, that is 10 centimetres, so that's pleasing. Right, it's only 10, 10 mil foam, so it shouldn't be too difficult just to pull these lines without completely messing everything up. These bits here are going to be keeping because essentially what we're going to do is make buildings or make bits of scattered terrain and just be able to slot them in like that. That's the plan. So that one went well. Uh, on to the next one. So we want to make sure again that this is, we want these all to look like nicely parallel and stuff. So, um, and we want it to be at a sensible distance away. So base sizes in middle earth strategy battle game are 25 mil. So we want to make sure there's room for two of them, I reckon. Um, so 50 mil and then a little bit. About there would be good. And use our template thing to work out. I think it's going to be about there. Up to 10 mil. Then we're going to do the same thing with a set square, but rather than 20 by 10, it's going to be 10 by 10 square like that. So, so that's that one done. Um, and the next one we are going to put here, which is a nice easy one to do. So go from there, yeah well, I'm going to go for 54 mil again. I don't know why it's 54, but it is. And we can just start doing our line there like that. And that's going to start from there. And although it's tempting to do the line on from there, I'm actually going to be sensible about this and work from one line rather than try to get two lines to match up. So, once again, you don't need to see me cut out another square, but what's going to happen from here is so that one's going to go up to there and have we got space to have another one in the same way. We just about do. So, yeah, I'm going to cut out this one and then I'm going to cut out another one for there and I think that'll be a, a nice a nice footprint for the buildings to sit in. So, so that is what all four cut out end up looking like. And what I have decided would be a good thing. Let's say these two boards are next to each other. I don't want exactly the same thing. 
So it's going to be a flipped over template, but I'm going to move it right across to the edge. What I'm going to do is just take a pencil here and I'm going to put a dot at each corner. So rather than having to do all of that work with the set square again, I can know that these are the right distance apart. Obviously I'm going to still going to measure it, but it's going to save me a whole bunch of time. So that's going to give us our layout for the next one. So I'm going to get on with cutting all of that out. So as is my want, I uh, decided to not do an exact mirror image of this. So I put, um, I started with that one and then I didn't carry on with it. And then I decided that it would be cool if we could have an L-shaped building as well, or L-shaped building footprint. So I'm gonna cut out this here. Now we have an L-shaped footprint. So we have a couple of bits where it's all at an angle and I thought that it would be a nice contrast if the next one that I made, or the next two I made, uh, had them at, um, were perpendicular. In the centre of this one here, uh, it's going to be a 20 by 20. Essentially, there's going to be a 20 by 10 in the middle at each of these edges, uh, which is just going to be a case of measuring in or measuring from the centre outwards. Um, and then chucking a few other buildings in which we're gonna which I'll cut out. So I don't think you particularly need to see me cutting these out again. You've got the idea of it now, so I'm just gonna go, get on with it. So next time you see it, these will be cut out. So these would be the lower parts and these are the cutouts that we've done. So this is the central one I was just talking about, but equally this can be rotated and these could be at, right at the edge of the board with uh, a building there. Um, so, if you can begin to imagine what it would be like with buildings there, so there'd be alleyways and stuff, and some of these would just be flat, some of them would be massive puddles where the ground's going to fall into pieces and stuff, so um, yeah, I'm quite excited about how this is going to look. And I feel like I've got every reason to feel excited because although the board isn't finished, I think it looks absolutely fantastic like it is right now. So yeah, that's the uh, the first stage of the construction process. In the next uh, video, I'll be showing you how I uh, take the, uh, the very boring looking black foam and turn it into the much more interesting uh, cobblestones and bits and pieces that you're seeing on the, uh, the lower part of the board right now, as well as a few other things as well. So uh, be sure to subscribe, please like this video, please leave any, leave any comments you've got about the project or anything you'd like to see across the channel um, and uh, hit the notification bell. That means that when a new video comes up, you will be notified and share this around to your friends, your family and uh, most importantly, your vet. Uh, I don't know why I said that, but there we go. Uh, catch you for another video soon.